I'm Luke. With my partner Spencer, we took a look at the manifold absolute pressure sensor and a mass airflow sensor to more accurately understand how they function and contribute to running the engine. We began our testing on the manifold absolute pressure sensor of a 2006 Dodge Grand Caravan and found something a little peculiar with the wiring on this vehicle. We started by checking the MAP sensor's voltage supply and we observed good voltage to the sensor. We then checked the sensor's signal voltage with the vehicle running, which turned out to be good. We also established that the sensor had a good ground path. The 2006 Dodge Grand Caravan MAP sensor grounds through the EGR solenoid to a chassis ground. Because of this, we decided to short the MAP sensor's ground wire to the signal wire to see its effect on how the vehicle actually ran. Unfortunately, the vehicle did not run particularly well in the first place due to what is assumed to be a bad injector on cylinder number 5. But to our surprise, the engine operation with the shorted MAP sensor did not seem to change it. However, the cooling fans were observed on at idle, so we decided to check our diagnostic trouble codes and PID info. The vehicle already had many existing codes and they were cleared to see if anything was actually abnormal relating to the shorting of the MAP sensor. Once cleared, the misfire and ECT codes stayed. The PID data told us that the ECT sensor was reading negative 40 degrees Fahrenheit at all times. Because of that, we tested the sensor's internal resistance while the sensor was unplugged. The resistance was found to be okay. The next step was to check power and signal ground of the two-wire sensor. We observed an odd reading at the ground of the vehicle. We followed the signal ground to the PCM, but instead of the PCM, a box with resistors that was used to create artificial faults on the vehicle was found. When the resistor in the box was turned off, we expected to see a proper signal and temperature reading return. However, it still did not. The sensor was then double checked and a bent male pin of the connector was found by Mr. Pin who assisted in the diagnosis. The bent pin was determined to be the cause of the fault and was easily fixed by straightening the pin. Because the Grand Caravan turned out to be bugged for math testing, we switched vehicles to a 2005 Suzuki Verona. To test the functionality of the Verona's three-wire mass airflow sensor, we started off by back probing the power supply, the ground, and the signal wire. The power supply wire and the signal wire were both tested for voltage with the engine off, key on, and also when the engine was at idle. All of these readings were good and as expected. We then checked the ground wire for negative potential and it was confirmed as good as well. Since the voltage readings and the PID information told us the sensor was functioning properly, we decided to see how the engine would respond if we shorted the signal wire to ground. We're gonna be shorting the signal wire of the MAF sensor to the negative post of the battery to drop the signal voltage. The scan tool you can see it now reads zero pounds per minute, and there is zero change in how the engine is running. Uh, after we shorted the signal wire to uh, ground on the battery terminal, it gave us a um, MAF or VAF A circuit low input code or PO102. As shown, when you do short the mass airflow sensor to ground, it does set off a code. However, we found that it had a very minuscule effect on the performance of the engine while idling. When shorted, the engine RPMs raised very shortly before returning to a normal idle. We also found that the EGR valve would open when the signal was shorted to power and close again when the short was removed. This would mean that the PCM thought that the engine was under a higher load than it actually was. We were also able to see the signal wave in Hertz by using the Picoscope program 
and connecting it to the signal wire.